In central Utah, there are several superb Native American rock art sites, and the Rochester panel is probably one of the most spectacular. Before visiting the Rochester panel, we think it's helpful to be aware of both the styles of rock art and the people that created them. However, keep in mind that both rock art and the history of Native American people are complex and much of the details about them are beyond the scope of our virtual tour of the Rochester panel and the Mullen Reef petroglyphs. Let's talk types of rock art. First, there is the petroglyph, which is an image created by picking away at a rock surface. In the Southwest, they are often found on rocks that have what's called desert varnish that's been removed to show the original lighter color of the rock underneath. This makes the image stand out. Second, there is the pictograph, which is painted or drawn onto a rock surface rather than being etched. For paint, Native Americans used colorful vegetation that was crushed and mixed with water, saliva, or animal blood. Third, there are cowboy glyphs. As you might guess, these were inscriptions carved or scratched into a rock face by the first white settlers in the West, marking people in historical dates. Next, let's define some of the people that created rock art in the Southwest. The most well-known people are the Anasazi, now known as the Ancestral Puebloan people. They covered a large swath of the Southwest, and explaining more about them is also beyond the scope of this video. Just know that they created mostly petroglyphs. There was also an ancient group called the Fremont people. They lived in central Utah about the same time as the Anasazi. They created both petroglyphs and pictographs. They also drew unique drawings of human-like figures with trapezoidal shaped bodies that usually included antennae or horns. Great examples of Fremont people rock art can be seen at the Fremont Indian State Park located about 70 miles east of the Rochester Panel along I-70 at exit number 17. On our maps, here is where the Rochester Panel is located, and here is Fremont Indian State Park. Then there is Barrier Canyon style rock art. Most of these are pictographs that were delicately painted. These people were from the archaic culture that were ancestors to the Fremont and Anasazi and existed approximately between 2,000 and 10,000 years ago. A great example of this rock art can be seen 30 miles from the Rochester Panel site along I-70, but it is difficult to get to. This pictograph panel is known as the Head of Sinbad. We sometimes wonder if Steven Spielberg got his inspiration of the character E.T. from one of the drawings here. All right, back to the Rochester panel. What makes this site so unique is that there are drawing styles found here from all of the aforementioned cultures. Plus, you're only going to find petroglyphs here, no pictographs. Experts on Native American rock art all agree they have no idea what they mean or who really created them. If you visit these sites, you can learn more about them at the Fremont Indian State Park. Or, like us, you can simply have a little more to wonder about in this fascinating world of ours. With that said, the Rochester panel actually does hint at a few clues to the story that these Native Americans may have been telling. 
By visiting the Museum of the San Rafael in the town of Castledale, we learned more about what the imagery most likely meant. But before we explain what we learned, let's move forward with our tour now and then touch on the details when we're finished. Are you ready to check this place out? Okay, we'll start with a map of Utah and zoom into where this place is located. Then, you'll see an aerial view of the hike to the panel. After that, you'll see the nearby Mullen Reef petroglyph site. And lastly, we'll share with you what we learned at the museum. So, sit back and enjoy the tour.
All right, now that you've taken a tour of the Rochester panel, let's circle back and take a trip over to the Museum of the San Rafael in Castledale, where we learned more about this wonderful panel. From the Rochester panel, once you return to Highway 10, Castledale is located about 22 miles to the north following Highway 10. The museum is located in the middle of town and a half a block off the highway. Look for signs pointing to the museum. Displays at the museum will explain a study that was done on the Rochester panel back in 1983. The study's conclusion was that the panel is the most mindful and intentionally executed rock art panel in the region. The study continues to report that the main feature in the panel, what most people refer to as the rainbow, is actually a calendar observatory that was created by the Fremont people. It was discovered that if a pole is erected at a very specific point in front of the panel, it would cast a shadow on specific petroglyphs, representing different things at different times of the year. While talking to a docent at the museum who is part of a group that studies rock art sites, we learned some more interesting tidbits about the panel. As you saw in the tour, there are some very unique characters in the panel, such as these animals, referred to as zoomorphs, that look like a cross between a lizard and a dog. That rock art study group believes that this long vertical line that leaves the panel and ascends to the very top of the rock face is likely to be the Fremont people's version of their path to a heaven or afterlife. If you look along that line, you'll find various inscriptions, mainly this character. You'll see this character is similar to the ones over here. Could this be representing someone ascending that line to heaven? Or could this be a figure that protects or guides someone on the path to the afterlife? Then, what's up with these characters? They certainly look ominous, and, except for one of them, they are all facing and near this line. Could these characters be trying to scare those that are attempting to climb up the line, or perhaps trying to tempt them into doing something other than ascend? It certainly gives us something to wonder about. Again, this information is all guesswork. Even though the 1983 study of placing a pole in a certain spot proved some facts, only the Fremont people know what they drew, and unfortunately, they're not around anymore to tell us. Furthermore, it is evident in the panel that the Fremont people were not the only ones that left their art here. Other cultures, both before the Fremont and after, left their distinctive form of inscriptions. The Rochester panel is really a bit of a hodgepodge of rock art, which adds to the complexity of trying to figure out what is being said here. So, it goes back to what we said earlier, that it's always fun to have a little bit more to wonder about in this amazing world of ours, and the Rochester panel certainly fits into that category. All right, let's take a quick look at the Mullen Reef Petroglyph site which is also known as dry wash petroglyphs and, coincidentally, is next to a dinosaur trackway.
We hope that these virtual video tours have given you more insight and appreciation for these fascinating Native American rock inscription sites. Thanks for joining us on our tour. Happy exploring!